A very good morning to everyone online and in the room here in this beautiful, gorgeous city of The Hague. I'm thrilled to be here in this first hybrid key event since November 2019. And as you can imagine, uh, I'm a big advocate of digital and data spaces, but I'm also convinced that no digital device can replace this positive energy of meeting people in real. So I would like to thank Mrs. Knebler for hosting us today and also since 2007, which she reminds us graciously. And I would like to thank the Europeana team for bringing us all together because hybrid events are not easy to organize. So very well done. Bravo. The Europeana conferences have, been, have become an important policy milestone in addition to being a key event for the community. Last year, Commissioner Breton announced the new policy vision of the Commission and the framework that we put uh, on the table, which is called the Recommendation on a Common European Data Space for Cultural Heritage. It was published on the same day as the Europeana Conference on the 10th of November 2021. And today, one year later, I'm very happy to say that we have met another key milestone, which is to set in motion the rollout of the data space through two strands of work, which are, on the one hand, the operations of the central services, and on the other hand, the projects that are going to enrich the offer that the central services are going to offer to the community. So I'm very pleased to announce that the operations of the central services will be done by an excellent consortium led by Europeana Foundation together with 19 partners. And this really reflects the um, complicated, complex, advanced expertise uh, which is needed in this endeavor. So congratulations to all the partners and welcome on board. We have a lot of work ahead. And this work uh, will, con will combine continuity as well as change. Europeana Foundation, under the leadership of Harry, will make sure that we build on the work done so far. At the same time, by bringing this technical, technological expertise, but also this expertise to reach out and bring the community in, we are gearing towards evolving from a digital service infrastructure to a data space. We are also going to launch four projects that will enrich the central services through high quality data, tools and advanced technology. The data space has been the main topic of our conversations since last year at the European 21, at the conference under the French presidency, at the European Aggregators Forum, and now at European 22. These conversations are, a, are key to bring us all on board, to make sure we understand each other, and really to prepare everyone, to prepare the community to embrace this evolution. And I'm really looking forward uh, to the panel this morning where we're really going to uh, discuss the, the data space and also different dimensions uh, and, and, and the needs and the starting points uh, of everyone. And it's going to be moderated by a great, uh, a great host. So really looking forward to it. In the age of virtual world and metaverses, we need more than ever to show our value proposition our vision of a data space that empowers cultural heritage institutions to share widely the amazing content, the treasures that they hold. And through this endeavor to facilitate limitless possibilities in new knowledge, new insights, new content, new services, and new products that can be derived or created. But to make this vision happen, we need to involve Evolution means that we build on the robust foundations of the work done, but also we gear up to change. And change is a work we don't like because it, is, it, pus it pushes us out of our usual boundaries, out of the comfort zone we have been operating under. 
And I quite like the words by Barack Obama, the former president. Lily, you quoted Galileo. I'll quote someone who's still living. And <laughs> President Obama said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait some, for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. And this is why we are here today to discuss these coming changes, to turn this dig digital service infrastructure to a truly federated data space where we make full use of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, such as data, such as open data, linked data that you mentioned, such as virtual reality. A data space where we reach real seamless multilingualism, a data space where we offer a whole range of capacity building services from the most cutting edge tools to upscaling, to rescaling through guidelines, trainings, curriculums of skills for newcomers and for young professionals to join the community. A data space where our aggregators are empowered to scale up their activities and where cultural heritage institutions find their natural home because there is no better place than home. A data space which grows also through its interactions with other data spaces. But I'm aware that this evolution is happening with a, within a wider, more profound change, which is climate change and the energy crisis. We are not an island. We live in the wider world where these forces are happening. And climate change and energy crisis were the focal point in the speech of President von der Leyen two weeks ago. So our endeavors will have to integrate climate change mitigation actions in every step. President von der Leyen said, the great challenges of this century, such as climate change and digitalization, it is not one against the other. It is how we are going to align these and reinforce each other. The European policy framework, which I mentioned earlier, the recommendation on a common European data space, includes such reflections. It encourages member states to have a comprehensive digital strategy that takes into account the purpose of digitization, the target user groups, the highest quality affordable, the digital preservation, which is so much needed to make sure that valuable cultural heritage assets are preserved for the generations to come. It is not about mass digitization. It is about adopting a sobriety point of view and preserving only the highest quality affordable as all middle and low quality versions can be extracted from it. It is about defining and following priorities on what, when and how to digitize, what to keep and not to keep, what to document, not to document. It is about important choices that we need to make. And that's why these discussions, these conversations are so important. And it is my aspiration that the data space will also contribute to this climate change imperative towards a net zero environment that President von der Leyen mentioned. For instance, with information about the carbon footprint of preserving and using each digital object. For instance, I know that many cloud and data centers providers are not very keen on providing the info on carbon footprint, but we should find out which ones do and integrate them in our reflections for, making, for developing our strategy. So addressing these challenges will require conversations like these today and many more that we will be having over the three days, over the years. It will also require us to acquire new skills up, uh, um, to uh, improve our skills and it will uh, require uh, us to work together and no one will, uh, else will do it for us. We must build it together, we must do it together, all of us. The foundations are there, the continuity I mentioned at the beginning, the 15 years solid work, the, the institutions, now it is in our hands and I'll keep my hand out of the mic <laughs> to implement it. Uh, this new vision and to make it a reality all together. And with this, I'm done and I will leave you with these thoughts and wish you a very inspiring conference. Thank you. Thank you.